Welcome back to another one of my videos. Unfortunately for this one, the audio failed to record through the cameras, so I have to fully dub it, which to me is less interesting, no airplane noise. Before I introduce the flight here, I'll kind of explain what's going on as I'm fiddling my, with my GPS here. I'd gotten a, a message that something had failed, and here I am taking a picture of it so I could go research it later if I couldn't figure it out. Um, you can't see very well because it's behind my head, but that little square Garmin box, which is called a, a G5, you'll notice that it's not powered on. And since it's connected to the GPS, and it didn't power on for whatever reason with coming with starting the, the airplane up, the GPS was thrown in error. And here I am, being pretty dumb, fiddling with the GPS, trying to figure out what's going on and not realizing the G5 hadn't booted up but here as I go through my checklist here I am changing the altimeter setting eventually I get smart enough to see that oh hey look the G5's not on so I'm sitting there trying to power it on you have to hold that power button uh, a long while before it'll come on but eventually it does come on and then you'll see see I, I gave up already you gotta push that button longer so then eventually it powers up and then the error on the 530 goes away. So normally those those G5s power up right at startup, but for whatever reason this time it decided not to. So there you see it's coming on and uh, the, the error for the GPS goes away. So that's good. And uh, I'm making the realization, yep, there I pointed to both. I make the realization that, oh, hey dummy, you got to have both those on, otherwise you get that error. This is also the first flight I had officially recorded with the tail cam. So we've got some takeoff pictures here from that tail cam. So here I am lying up on runway 18, taking off to the south. Uh, this was on an IFR flight plan, but really it wasn't IFR conditions. I just prefer filing IFR and being in the system and practicing doing that so I don't get rusty on my procedures but uh, very normal takeoff here as you'll see lift off there and you'll get to watch the gear fold up as I uh, bring the lever up and you'll get to see the beautiful fall colors of the Peoria area here as we take off and uh, get my heading back to the northwest as we're heading for Rochester. This is my first time picking up passengers at the Mayo Clinic up in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, you won't see them in this video, but as a family of three, uh, mom and dad, and then their daughter who had been at Mayo, um, trying to address some, some issues, uh, gastrointestinal issues, I believe it was. But uh, here, making the turn back to the north, and you get to see all the, well, I guess this would have been past peak color season, but uh, still see some of the, the leaves turning color uh, down there in, in the Peoria area. I believe this was the first week of November, so it was getting cold, but wasn't bad at all. And uh, it was a pretty, pretty uneventful flight up to Rochester. So hopefully you enjoy some of these views, and then I'll come back and talk about the landing.
Okay, if you've made it this far, you're to be commended. I might be the only one that would sit and watch YouTube videos of passing scenery all day long. But uh, here I am on the approach to Rochester, kind of on a meandering, what we call base leg. I just dropped the gear there. You see that red light at the top. That means the gear is in transit. And now those three green lights near my throttle quadrant tell me that the gear is down and locked. I'm sitting there going through my checklist, making sure my seatbelt was fastened, my boost pump was on. When you land, you have your, your fuel boost pump on as a backup to your mechanical pup that's attached to the engine. Just making sure you've always got fuel pressure for when you land in critical phases of flight. And here I am turning final towards runway 13 at Rochester. They'd given me a really meandering downwind to base leg that day. I can't remember if it was because of traffic or why that had happened, but I had like a six six mile um, out from the airport downwind leg and then a real lazy turn into final. So here I am turning to final and eventually going to see the runway here. There it is. And then we'll cut some of the approach out since it's such a long approach here. Kind of walk you through what I'm thinking as I'm approaching the airport. You'll see it's a little, it gets a little bumpier as you get down towards the ground. It was a pretty smooth flight though. You're just fighting little bumps that come off of the earth's surface as the wind has friction against the earth. Um, so basically, now this is not instruction, by the way, but basically what you're trying to do here is keep the keep the runway centered in the in the windscreen. The runway kind of doesn't move. That means that's what you're going to get to. And so just trying to bring it in. You're concentrating on keeping it centered, keeping your nose straight, keeping your airspeed at a certain spot, and then just bringing it in nice and steady. Unfortunately, the tail cam had run out of battery at this point, so you don't get to see a tail cam version of the landing. If I remember correctly, the landing wasn't terrible, so you won't be able to fully realize that from this angle. But uh, here, you're coming into land, you're just trying to keep your nose straight so that when you touch down, the airplane's going straight down the runway. And there's touchdown. Nice thing about landing on runway 13 when you get to Rochester and you're going to go pick up people that are going to or from Mayo is you're going through signature flight support and when you come right off the runway here on 13 signature flight support is right in front of you and I will say that uh, signature does a great job with people coming in and out of Mayo they're very kind to us that are doing those kinds of flights they don't charge us for any parking or landing fees and there's even a, a later flight where I'd stayed overnight and they didn't charge me for a hangar fee for staying overnight, and that was great. They are uh, really supportive of the people coming in and out of Mayo and understanding what it takes to do uh, that kind of treatment, the costs involved, and they're really, really great helping out to defray those costs for those of us trying to help out. So I will have switched either to sometimes Tower would keep you and just have you taxi in. Sometimes they switch you to ground. Usually it's the same person, so they don't even have you switch. But they uh, had me taxi straight in here, and you'll see the person that's going to wave me in here. There they are. You might not be able to notice which one they are, but they're there straight in front with their arms up. And they make these, uh, these signals to tell you where to go and, and, and where to park. I am maneuvering. Made me a little nervous. Those, I don't think those were my passengers walking there, but made me a little nervous them walking out while I was trying to taxi in here. But here they uh, then say, okay, now come along. And then you'll see them raise their arms and make an X there. And that means stop. So we stopped there, shut it down, and had a successful flight. So thanks for joining along, and uh, hopefully the audio will get fixed for the next one.